you last joined me, I just finished changing the master cylinder. And like I said, I'm going to check out the rear brakes. And this is a GM 14 bolt rear that you have to pull the axle shafts out of in order to get the drums off. I know guys are already yelling at me, it's under the truck. You don't need to pull the cover to get the axles out. They undo externally. I'm doing this anyway because I need to change the fluid. Plus, it'll just help me guide the axles back in later. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to pull the cover off and drain all the old fluid out. Because just got this truck and the fluid could have been in there since new. Got my trusty 3 8 Ingersoll Rand Titanium, which is my universal uh, tool here. So you leave the top bolt in, and then you crack the bottom cover. Now normally I'll need a screwdriver. Not in this case, it was already pretty much there. So leaving that top bolt in keeps it from falling on your face when you're doing it and having all that gear oil all over you. This gear oil, this gear oil actually looks pretty clean, but it smells odd. Like it doesn't smell like gear oil. Like I can't describe the smell of this. I don't know if they had some fancy high tech gear oil in it or something. But I'll let this uh, drain out. I'll show you what the innards look like. Well, there's the innards of a 14 bolt. Not much to see, just giant gear. Uh, this truck does have a posi, or it's actually called a govlock, which is just a crappier version of a regular posi unit they put in these trucks. But you can't really see it because it's all enclosed in this business here. So now I'll move on to pulling the axles out so I can get the drums off. So I'm getting extra fancy here. We have lighting, cameras back. Things start working. Unleash the axle here. Uh, the gear oil smells just as weird out here, too. Eventually, I'll put my finger on what it smells like. It's familiar, but it's not gear oil. Okay, there's a special six uh, teeth lock nut in there. You need that socket to remove with six teeth on it. grabbers on it. That's why it was kind of jumping. I guess it's like some form of lock nut. But there's what you take off. And beyond that, there's another one. There was that little grabby thing. Once you tighten this one I'm taking off now, 
Then you put that one on the outside to keep this one snug. So just picture it like two nuts on top of each other. Number two. Now, it should come off if the brakes aren't holding it up. Well, there's a the result. Um, I don't see anything wrong. Wheel cylinder looks, well, it's not leaking. Shoes have plenty of meat on them. So, uh, I might grease an adjuster down there, but I think this side passes. I just got the driver's side apart. And the driver's side has failed me. Wheel cylinder's leaking. Plus, you can tell it looks like complete garbage. So I guess I am doing the rear brakes on it. We'll start there. So I'm going to do both wheel cylinders. Um, I mean, oh, I just noticed the shoe is missing a giant chunk. Look at that. Okay, I guess I'm, missing, guess I'm putting shoes on it now. Uh, I guess I'm doing everything. Springs, adjusters. I'm going to go that far. Might as well do all of it. Because the uh, brake fluid soaked into this. Oh, here's the rest of the shoe. I guess I can just glue that back on or something. Yeah, so passenger side fine, driver side junk, needs everything. But I was kind of anticipating that anyway, because I figured the bleeders were probably going to snap off when I went to bleed the rear. So pretty much assumed I was going to put U-joints in it, I mean not U-joints, uh, wheel cylinders in it. So I guess now i got to go get parts and put it back together. Okay, so I picked up all the parts and now I'm going to start taking... Uh all this goodness apart here. There's a couple of tools I like for drum brakes. This is the obvious drum brake pliers. Um, I've tried a few different brands of these. Don't buy a cheap one. They'll just deflect and bend and it's hard to use. This is an old Craftsman one as opposed to a new Craftsman one. Uh, this is for removing the hold down springs. We'll see that in a second. And this is a little tool, I believe Lyle makes it. You can see there. And what you actually do is you hook the spring in here and you actually tighten it up and then you can just kind of pull the spring around any way you want. The garage I worked at had one of those. I don't think they're a real common one, but they come in handy with certain springs. The end on this thing has a weird little uh, cup on it. What this does is you can put it like that over the spring, catch that in it, and you can pry the spring off. One thing I should mention, first of all, I'm changing all these springs, so, yeah. But, uh, if you have a cell phone, which I'm sure you probably do at this point, take a picture of all these, how they go, before you take them apart. Because if you aren't kind of familiar with where the drum brake springs go, it can be kind of confusing when you go to put it back together. I've done these enough where I can figure out where they all go. Plus, I'm videoing it. Now this little hold down tool I was talking about it goes right on these cups. You have to hold, there's a pin on the back. Hold that, you push this in, do it a quarter turn. This hold down spring comes off. You'll see these hold downs have a little notch in them. I'm about to take the wheel cylinder off. And it's kind of hard to see without getting the camera in here, but here's the brake line, which you can obviously see. And there's two 3 8 bolts. Now, I already did the other side due to the magic of Hollywood here. And these nuts are not coming out, period, which I was kind of prepared for. So I'm just going to go ahead and just cut the line right away with this little air saw. There you go. And the line's off. I just need to take the ratchet. Undo the two bolts holding the wheel cylinder on. Okay, now 
after doing that, then the wheel cylinder just pretty much pops out. Except when it's all rusted in. Okay, it's a bunch of just goo all over this now. And I'm going to use my favorite cleaning chemical, which is just gallons and gallons of AutoZone brake cleaner. Okay, I got about, it about as cleaned up as it's going to get. It's kind of rusty, but stuff's not coming off. So time to put the new shoes back on. Here's the trick of brake shoes. It's two different ones. You have a longer one and a shorter one. The longer one is called the trailing shoe, and obviously the shorter one is the leading shoe. Well, I shouldn't say obviously, it's because the longer one goes on the rearward part of the vehicle. In this case, it's also thicker, but that isn't always the case. I will show you the method that I use for mounting brake shoes. First step is you have to get your self-adjuster, which is a star wheel. See, actually ratchets apart. Now the one thing I do is I put some more grease on these because they don't really have very much on them. So I use actual brake grease. As you can see here, I just coat the thread some more because if these seize up, your rear brakes are done for for the most part. Once the ECs up, they'll never work right again, I should say. Then you also have this little cap, which sometimes is fixed. On this one, it spins. Same thing. Just put a little bit of grease on that. I know I'm going to get people complaining that don't put any grease on anything on brakes. But guess what? This is right. I never have any problems. So, the bottom of the shoe at least on Chevy's, on these style, it's a notch where this goes. There's also this spring. So what you do is, hook the spring in there. You put the star wheel adjuster in. And then I will hook the other end of the spring into the brake shoe. like so, and then I pivot, or I use that as leverage to pop the star wheel in. And then that will hold enough tension on the spring and vice versa where nothing comes apart. There you go. Now you have them in like one little unit. And they'll still, you know, they can still come apart. Now they'll just kind of hang there like that so you can work around them. Uh, this truck, if you can see down here, see this little thing? This is the e-brake lever. And there is a little stud on here with a little groove cut in it. And that is where, well, I should say, that's, it attaches to the rear shoe. And there is a little e-clip that goes on there some grease on this too because this has to pivot and this is another thing where if it seizes it'll ruin your day. Pretty much if anything seizes in a drum brakes or any kind of brake, something is supposed to move that doesn't anymore, pretty much wrecks everything around it. the little clip that holds it on. Okay, I got that on with much less cursing than the last side. So, the next thing that I put on is the hold-down springs. For the hold-downs, you'll have a needle, which looks like this, or a nail, whatever you want to call it. Goes through a hole in the backing plate and comes through the front of the brake shoes right here. You probably can't see it. Then, I will show you for detail. One of these goes in the shoe. Then a spring goes on top of that. And then one of these little cups goes on top of that. 
and with that tool I described earlier, the hold down spring tool, you press in on this, you twist it, because up in there, see there is a slot, which will match the slot, or the, well, whatever you want to call it, of the nail. And when you press down on it, it will go through, and then you want to twist it a quarter turn and come back out, and now it's trapped. It's going to make a lot more sense me showing you like this than it is on the actual brakes. Okay, the next part um, I did on the truck in the last side, and it was terrible. So what you have to do, this is one of these self-adjusting uh, pieces, a big lever. And this little piece here just gets notched into the top like so. Then you have a spring, which gets hooked there, and then they want you to hook it on the tippity top there. Now you try and do it in the truck, when you pry it, it moves the brake shoe right against it, and then you can't get it off. So I'm going to try and do it in the vise this time and see if it's a lot less horrendous. Okay, I'm going to give it a shot with the uh, weird little tool I was talking about earlier, this little brake clip thing. Much easier. There. That was like a half hour ordeal last night on the other side. Okay, so now what happens is this is held on to the shoe by one of those hold down springs. So you put this little cup through here and then onto the shoe in the lower bit. And because they put paint on the shoes, you're going to have to tap it on a little bit to get it to stay. It doesn't take much. Just get it started going through, and then it'll pretty much hold itself on. And then same procedure as the other hold down, another nail, and then this is a shorter spring. I should have noted that there's a much longer spring on the side. It does not get the adjuster. And actually, before I forget, because another thing that I forgot last time, a little tiny spring here goes underneath the adjuster. There's a little nib for it. It goes right there. So this side I don't have to do with all the tension on it, like the last side. Okay, now both the hold down springs are on. Now the shoe can't fall off. So next up, let's see, make sure I don't forget anything here. Oh yeah, the drum brake bar. That would be helpful. Well, since we're doing things in backwards order today, I guess I put the wheel cylinder on now that the shoes are on. It's pretty much my last chance to do it. And all of once again, all it holds in is those two bolts and a brake line when there is one. Okay, because I can't really be sure if all that wetness that was in the shoes, or in, you know, in general, was from the wheel cylinder, I'm also changing the wheel seals in these. And these have a wheel seal on the inside of the drum as opposed to on the end of the axle shaft like most rears do. Uh, from my experience last night, it has become apparent to me that these seals do not come out with anything less than Thor's hammer. And even that didn't work that well. So I'm going to take the grossly negligent approach and air hammer them out right now. And people are going to be screaming at me, but it was the only thing that got the other one out last night. Oh, this one's RTV'd in, too, which is just going to make it fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to catch it in the end, like in the edge of the seal. What we're hopefully going to try and do is put a kink in the seal that I can get a pry bar into.
Yahtzee. Okay, and the next thing to go on, these two little, I don't even know what you want to call them, little rods. They go on the end of the wheel cylinders, and they're what actually press on the shoes when the wheel cylinder expands. So there's little holes in the booties that these go through. You can put these on first. You just gotta make sure you have them on before you put the final retaining springs on. But sometimes you weigh a little bit, then they aren't falling out the whole time you're trying to work. Then here's your brake spreader bar. A little spring goes on the end of that. Honestly, I've never figured out what that does. But most cars seem to have them. Now, there is no, like, I shouldn't say there is no, there is a front to back to this. And I don't know how you tell what vehicle, you know, which way it goes. So you gotta take a look at it before you take it apart. This is how this one was with the spring forward. There we go. Now, next thing this hook thing goes in that self adjuster we were messing with earlier. You gotta make sure this little keeper up here is in. And then this actually hooks up on the here. And you can still do it by hand because I don't have the other springs on yet. Now just make sure you push this back as far as you can on this little stud because you have to make room for this spring, which pretty much goes on caddy corner to it. Now here's how you use the other business end of these things. Hooky end goes on the spring hook. Then if you're lucky, your shoes are riveted and you can find a nice little hidey hole to put this into. And then you just kind of stretch it on. Keep anything resembling fingers free. So it's almost there. And it's on. I uh, like that keep fingers free. These will ruin your day. One of these goes into your fingers or your finger gets caught between that and that or whatever. Nothing good will come of it. Now, last thing I have to do is put this spring, kind of like how the other one was, and this gets hooked up on the other end of that roddy hook. And there's more kind of little crappy holes you can go on to in these shoes. Brake drums are assembled. Well, brake shoes are assembled. Now it's on the drums. Okay, I have the new wheel seal here. Just place that in there. I just get them started with a hammer and then I tap them in with a piece of wood. change of it once it gets past the edge. And yes, this was the smallest piece of wood I had at the time of filming. There we go, and that's flush. Yeah, I've cleaned the drum up as good as it's going to get. I cleaned the uh, spindle off here pretty good. It's going to find a clean portion of a rag here. Put a little bit of gear oil on it. And rub it on here so hopefully I don't tear the seal putting it on. There we go. Now the joy of lifting up the 60 pound drum onto this. You can imagine how tractor trailer mechanics must feel. Is my phone ringing just in time? Definitely not going to answer it. Go 
have drums on. For some reason this drum was really hard to get seated over the shoes. So the front bearing fell out. So I did all that off camera. But now I'm just going to clean any debris. Okay, this little washer that I just put in with a little groove cut in it, and there's a groove in the spindle. Then you put in one of your retaining rings, and you oil it where it contacts that ring. I also oiled that ring. And then just get that started. Once you bottom that out, you torque the inner ring to 50 foot-pounds. Then you back it off enough to release the torque. Then you re-torque it to 35. Now, according to the directions, you're supposed to spin the drum while doing this, both torques. I found that nearly impossible, so I didn't do it. Here we go, 50 foot-pounds coming right up. spins. So now you back it off. Now you retorque it 35 foot pounds. Next step is this little lock ring again. I actually figured out its purpose now. See it's uh, toothed up here again, which again lines up in the spindle. You put the other little nut in there, and once you have it locked, you peen over two of these, according to the manual, into those grooves, and that'll keep this nut from backing off. So first, the lock plate, then the nut, And this nut gets torqued to 115 foot-pounds. So here we go. I'm torquing it to exactly 115 foot-pounds. What the guys are saying online is pretty much get as close as you can with those pins. There we go, two of them are on. So my drum is now back together. For some reason the brake shoes are dragging pretty good on this side, but I guess that's good, I won't have to adjust it that much. Either side was pretty loose, so I guess the one drum has more wear in it than the others. And in she goes. Oops, gasket. It should align on its own then. Okay, now I'm going to torque these. I think it said to something like 125 foot pounds. Something along those lines.
Okay, there we go. 14 bolt drum all back together. The only other thing I'm going to do here is because these things are ugly and stuck through the rims until I locate a set of hubcaps, I'm just going to break clean all this off and hit it with some black spray paint. Just so there isn't just, you know, rust sticking through my wheel. 